Hello guys and welcome to the Gonto series. In the previous tutorials, we talked about how to create a basic Hibernate application and went through all the steps needed to do that. We first created the hibernate.cfg.xml file to configure the Hibernate application and then created the model class student underscore info that we wanted to store or persist into the database. And finally, we wrote the code which would save the model object student underscore info into the database. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about one of the most important properties which we used in the Hibernate configuration file hpm to ddl dot auto property. This property can hold one of the four values create, create drop, update and validate. But before that, let's have a quick look at our database Hibernate tutorials which we used in the Hibernate application. I've already deleted all the tables from this database completely. So consider this database as a fresh database with no tables in it. So what we'll do is for the same application that is saving the student underscore info object into the student underscore information table in the database, we'll see the demo and explanation for each property one by one. So let's start. Let's give its value as create. run the application, check the output. It created the table student underscore information with data as role number one and name as gone to one. Now let's change the role number as two and name as gone to two. And rerun the application. Let's check the output. Oops, what it has done. Where is the earlier record that we inserted last time that is role number one and name as gone to one. And here lies the point. Hibernate says if you keep its value as create, every time you run your Hibernate application, it will drop off the existing schema like tables and other database entities along with the data if present in the database and recreate the schema based on the model classes in your Hibernate application. So every time you run your application, you get a new schema, but you lose all your previous data. So technically, what it means is Hibernate would drop off the existing schema from the database that is all tables and other DB entities at the time of creating the session factory object when you run the program. Now our database is having a record with roll number as two and name as gone to two. Let's change the value to create drop and change the roll number and name as three and gone to three. Rerun the application. Let's check the output. Oops, what it has done. It has done exactly the same thing as in case of property value as create that is dropping off the existing schema along with deleting the previous records and then recreating the schema. Now let's do one more thing in the program. Close the session factory explicitly. And change the value of roll number as four and name as gone to four and rerun the application. Let's check the output. Oops, what it has done. There's no table at all in the database with the name student underscore information. It has deleted it along with all the previous data. And here's the point. Hibernate says, if you keep its value as create drop, everything else would remain the same as in create. The only additional task it does is when you explicitly close the session factory object in the program, Hibernate would drop off the schema and all data. And if you're not closing the session factory explicitly in the program, create drop would just behave as a create. We provide the value as update. Hibernate documentation says every time you run your application, Hibernate would just update the schema. For example, if there's any change in the column name for a certain table or any other update, it will do that update, but your data would be safe. It sounds great, but while working with the value update, 
I kind of found weird results many times. Even Hibernate documentation says they introduced this value just for the experimental purpose as of now and it should not be used in production servers anytime. So my suggestion is do not use this value in production. Finally, if you provide its values validate every time you run your application, it will just validate the existing database schema with the one which can be generated using the annotated model classes and would not update or make any changes to the database. If there are no differences, it will execute the program normally. But if there are differences, it will throw an exception at runtime. It varies from developer to developer about which property value they would like to go with. If we go to the current Hibernate documentation, they have only provided the definition of all these values and have not talked much on their usage in development or in production environments. I would suggest that all these values are meant for development environments only. And when you give your application to the client, that is for the production environment, it's always good to write a user defined SQL script file for creation or modification of database tables or any other database objects. And do not let Hibernate create, modify or validate your database schema in production. And for this, I recommend for production environment, do not set hibernate.hpm to tdl.auto property itself in the configuration file. And the default would be not to make any changes to the database. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about some commonly used Hibernate annotations. Mm -hmm.